Might our solar system evolve in an Elliott wave? This is the basic five waves up, three waves down Elliott pattern. It's the overriding form of progress in the stock market. And it often manifests in other social expressions and in non-human and even non-living patterns of growth. Stars undergo evolution. This image depicts the sun's luminosity since it ignited and projects it into the future, twice magnifying the time scale. We simply added the red Elliott wave labels. Over the 4.5 billion years since it ignited, the sun's luminosity has increased by about 30%. Solar warming is happening. The nuclear furnace at the center of every star begins to overheat in the end. Before wave one is over, the Earth will be roasted to bare rock. During wave three, Earth will have lakes of molten aluminum and copper. In wave five, Earth will be burnt to an iron core if not completely vaporized. At the peak of wave five, the sun's helium core will explode, ignite, and burn within a matter of minutes, leading to a crash in luminosity. And much like the latter stages of a bear market, the final 140 million years of the sun's life, waves B and C, will be very complicated. In four or five huge bursts, roughly 100,000 years apart, the outer layers of the sun will separate from the core and be completely blown away. The sun will eventually become a beautiful nebula, such as NGC 6751. We are stardust, we are golden. So, Let's look at the evolution of the Earth. <clears throat> Most illustrations of geological chronology compress all the early eras and they expand the later ones. This one's accurate. Earth's first four billion years were very boring. The most interesting evolution occurred very recently. Only 400 million years ago did plants colonize land and Earth become Earth-like. Humans are late to the party. Author John McPhee wrote, with your arms spread wide to represent all time on Earth, in a single stroke with a medium-grained nail file, you could eradicate human history. <laughs> we keep seeing self-similarity at different scales. It appears that oxygen levels in Earth's atmosphere may have increased in a five-wave pattern over the past four billion years. This illustration is from a 2014 paper. The faded red curve shows the classic two-step view of atmospheric evolution while the blue curve shows the more recent model emerging from new data. According to the authors, the arrows denote possible whiffs of O2 late in the Archaean. Their duration and magnitude are poorly understood. The number of Earth's minerals have increased in a pattern that resembles an Elliott wave. From about a dozen, 4.6 billion years ago, Earth now has 4,400 distinct minerals. In contrast, Mars and Mercury are estimated to have only about 350 each. Because these planets are missing two things crucial to the evolution of minerals, oxygen and life. Robert Hazen, geophysical research scientist at George Mason University says, if you think of all the non-living world as a stage on which life plays out its evolutionary drama, think again. The actors renovated their theater along the way. More than half the mineral species on Earth owe their existence to life. Viewing minerals in an evolutionary context fits the general theme of evolving systems throughout the cosmos. Simple states evolve into increasingly complicated states in many contexts. For example, the evolution of chemical elements in stars, mineral, mineral evolution in planets, molecular evolution that led to the origin of life, biological evolution through Darwinian natural selection, and human, social, and cultural evolution. There seems to be a common pattern underlying increases in complexity. The long evolution of the Earth has produced ubiquitous fractal patterns in nature. Countless natural forms are self-similar at different scales. River systems look like trees, branches off the trunk look like small versions of the tree, as do twigs off the branches. Even geological structures exhibit branching, as this map of the Mississippi River drainage shows. And just as trees do, river systems branch on both ends. This is the Lena River Delta in Siberia, branching into the Arctic Ocean. We've recently discovered branching drainage patterns on Mars. And at much smaller scale, this is beach sand on the Georgia coast another branching mineral structure 
created by water finding paths of least resistance. Lightning is another non-living manifestation of branching. As Prechter wrote in HSB, it's tempting to begin viewing almost everything as a fractal. Compare the illustrious simulation of the universe to this classic illustration of a neuron. Compare the branching in this tree silhouette to the branching in this slime mold. This is a cross-section of a fruit fly brain, and you can see familiar branching patterns to the right and left. This is a new imaging technique called a brain bow, which makes neurons glow in colors, allowing scientists to trace the dendrites and axons through the brain. And this is the Allen Mouse Brain Connectivity Atlas, the first detailed map of any mammal's neural network, published in April 2014. It traces connections between tiny cubes of brain tissue containing between 100 and 500 neurons. Diffusion-limited aggregation, DLA, is a process in which particles moving randomly cluster together to form fractal structures characterized by smaller and smaller branches. Prechter coined the term arboration to describe this common process. This is a DLA cluster of copper grown from a copper sulfate solution. Bacteria create similar patterns when growing in a Petri dish. This image is a Yale University teaching aid. The top left dish has friendly conditions with soft agar and abundant nutrients, resulting in compact growth with smooth boundaries. In more unfriendly conditions, such as the bottom right, the bacteria grow in patterns resembling DLA clusters. Yale's webpage says, the complex growth patterns of bacteria in stressful conditions may be due to cooperation among the bacteria. Fractal growth patterns may result from self-organization at many levels. Branching, or arboration, reflects spiral growth. Arboration reflects an expanding spiral in terms of the increasing number of arba, and a contracting spiral in terms of the increasing size of arba. One way to plot a spiral is to use the Fibonacci sequence. Another way is to use an idealized depiction of the stock market's progression. The top of each successive wave of higher degree is the touch point of the exponential expansion. The further time extends, the larger the degrees of trend, implying a geometric expansion in the size of the advances and retrenchments that form mankind's progress. On the left is a conventional plot of annual stock prices from 1942 to 1966. On the right, we show the same data in a polar plot. Price increases with distance from the center and time increases with clockwise rotation. This is a bull market, so the spiral is growing larger over time. This is a bear market, so the spiral is growing smaller over time. These two spirals were plotted by hand in 1998. Today, we have some better tools. This is the same bull market we just showed, but with weekly instead of annual data. The polar plot on the right contains every data point in the series and produces a nice spiral that expands over time. And just for fun, here's three centuries of annual U.S. stock prices plotted normally on the left and in a polar plot on the right. I think it's a very cool spiral. Now that you can see the connection, between spirals, Elliott waves, and arboration. Recall our spiral that reflected the increasing size of arba over time. The maximum sizes of animals increased in a five-wave pattern over four billion years. While this is not the prettiest five-wave advance you'll see today, it is an Elliott wave, another punctuated pattern of growth, a trend toward increasingly favorable conditions for life. 